piece of shit did I do now? Hello, lovelies. So, blacklisted again. Uh, I knew about this a couple of days ago, I guess, uh, but I didn't want to say anything about it because I didn't want to risk outing the person who was leaking the information. So, but now it's all out, so I guess I can do a video on it. Now, this really pisses me off to no end. Uh, this isn't the first time I've been blacklisted. It probably won't be the last time. And while I would like to say that I am cool, collected, calm, and unaffected whenever this or something similar happens, I'm not. Afraid? Are you kidding? <laughs> I always end up asking myself, what exactly is it that I have actually done? Uh, given politically, I'm still in the same tribe, ostensibly the same tribe as most of my detractors. Or, or at least in the camp that they pretend to be in. So what is it exactly that is the problem, given that any time I take a political compass test or, or similar, I end up somewhere to the, to the left and more libertarian than uh, Gandhi or Bakunin? You know, it, it, makes, you, it makes you wonder. <laughs> huh. I thought it was one of the prime numbers of the Zeman series. I haven't changed. And generally it comes down to one of three things, he said, showing the three rays of power. Um, a blog that they have never read from over a decade ago. That is a cunt move. Uh, my association uh, with Gamergate, which is now nearly a decade old. <laughs> God, that feels weird. Fucking spineless cunt. Uh, or my libertine sexual politics and the fact that I work with people in porn. Pardon my French, fuck those fuckers. Uh, the blog was the infamous In Defense of Rape blog and what that was actually about was free expression and allowing writers and creators and authors to paint with the full panoply of human experience, good and bad, positive and negative, but they've never read the motherfucker, so they don't have any idea. It gives me a headache just trying to think down to your level. Uh, Gamergate, what, what led me to participate in Gamergate? The same thing that led me to resist the satanic panic and similar things as well. My left-wing politics, my anti-corporatism, my anti-censorship, all things that should rightly be associated with the left who should have been on board with Gamergate. But uh, for some reason, they weren't uh, swallowing the, the mainstream narrative on, on that, I suppose. That would, that would seem to be the problem there. Dumb. Can't. Um, which makes you question a lot of things, <laughs> really. How how accurate is your self-described politics? And on the libertine sexual politics, I mean, there's a divide in feminism between sex-positive and sex-negative people. And for whatever reason, the sex-negative bunch seems to have won on the on the left. Um, even though simultaneously they seem to campaign for, uh, rightly in my opinion, um, a more explicit form of sex education and uh, other aspects. It, it seems like qu queer sexuality, yes. Straight sexuality, no. And uh, that's concerning and hypocritical and self-contradictory as well. But of course we also have the same problem uh, from the right. Isn't that rather unethical behaviour? Oh, is it? I'm afraid I'm a bit out of touch. You know, and a lot of things I seem to get caught in the middle of the more regressive, authoritarian and censorious forces on, 
on both sides. So yeah, caught between two gangs of wankers, basically, seems to be where I am. Most of the people on these lists I don't think deserve to be on them, even though many of them, probably most of them, I would disagree with politically. And these kinds of lists, these kind of actions, tend to have three different groups associated with them. Uh, the people who will attack you to your face, the people who will stab you in the back, and the wider group of silent people who are just afraid of lists like this or, or being put on lists like this. With a public attack, at least you can exercise your right of reply up until you get blocked. You will come up no more. Uh, with whisper networks, you don't even get that. So they're actually a lot a lot worse. This was meant to be a, a private list circulated uh, amongst people. You never get to see that normally. So you never get your right of reply normally. And the people promulgating these kind of lists and um, promoting the rumours, spreading the rumours and nonsense and gossip about people that's usually wrong, they never really run into a countering point of view. They never run into the reality. They never have to contend uh, with nuance or different interpretations. So that that's worse. It's quit being a cunt, that's what I'm saying. But worst of all, I think, are the, the cowards who bend to this sort of manipulation without ever bothering to check if the accusations are true or, as said, whether there's any nuance to it. You're a fucking pathetic cunt. Now, the effects of this sort of thing vary. Um, in the short term, there will probably be a nice little boost and in my profile I'll make a few extra sales, as will everyone else on their list, because people encounter something like that and they want to protest it. Um, and for a short while, that's that's good, that's positive, but it, it it doesn't last. So in the medium and long term, I'm I'm sad to say these sorts of things, these blacklists, these whisper networks, all, all the rest of it, they do work. That's no mistake. It's an attack. Uh, people become afraid of being associated with you, of buying anything of yours, of, of working with you or appearing on the same stream or whatever as you. you know, I've had to work pseudonymously and I've had to drop out of projects. I've had to relate the whole sorry tale to anyone who does offer to work with me over the last decade because it wouldn't be fair to just drop all this in their lap to expose them to sudden and abrupt attack by a bunch of online terminally online lunatics without giving them a heads up and some people understandably change their minds about working with me when they understand exactly how much hassle they're going to get for it remember what i told you don't be a cunt and long term it's really fucking wearing <laughs> it's definitely contributed to my worsening health issues uh, it shouldn't be hard to understand that imagine that you had been harassed nearly on the daily for um, almost a decade. How, how would that wear on your nerves? How, how white would your beard be by this point? Right? It, it does grind and it wears on you because for whatever reason there is this flaw in human psychology that we overemphasize the negative and the bad in our lives and what happens to us and we de-emphasize the good and the positive and and the supportive there's probably sound evolutionary reasons for it but it still kind of sucks when you're subjected to this kind of treatment you think you've got problems what are you supposed to do if you are a manically depressed robot and it's not as if you can really do anything about it which is incredibly frustrating other than vent which is what this is really I mean, the people who promulgate these kind of lists, they're not, they're not listening to you. Um, they will never listen to you. And countering their claims will only stiffen their resolve to treat you like shit. All right, so there's, there's no real point arguing back, except for the peanut gallery of the, of the undecided who might 
might be watching that yeah i guess that's a valid reason to fight back but yeah you're never going to change these people's minds once they're made up um especially because they know that other people will treat them like crap if they do change their mind tell me more about this man houdini you can't counter the nonsense you can't see you know and this is the tip of the iceberg there's probably 10 times as much horrible bullshit going around in back channels about people on that list as there is visible here and there is no way to counter that there is no way to insert the truth or the truth is you see it or the nuance or the context for any of these things um when you can't see what's being said that ain't the invisible guy. and rumors and gossip tend to expand and get more stupid the more they are passed around um unchallenged people embellish people add it's a human tendency for storytelling i suppose but it gets out of hand and perhaps the most insidious aspect of this list was the platformers section you know people who will actually talk to you people who will actually talk to anyone who's been disparaged or gossiped about or a pit on one of these blacklists that will get you on a blacklist <laughs> right so that also cuts off a, a channel by which you might be able to counter these rumors and gossip and nonsense that go around about you because anyone who dares to talk to you to investigate to find out what might have have really happened is going to be in deep shit themselves and obviously and blamelessly mostly that puts them off doing so suing them doesn't work Zach S has been at that for quite a while and has won quite a few of his of his cases uh, based on based on defamation of him. Has that stopped it? No. In fact, um, some of the people involved have managed to crowdfund the money to pay the fines and so on that were issued against them, and are probably a nice little profit besides. And it has boosted their profile. Has it done anything to help Zach's reputation? No. <laughs> not at all so there's nothing you can do except make whiny videos like this in the vain hope that perhaps one person investigating this or trying to find out what it is that you've actually done will pause listen absorb and check for themselves but don't hold out too much hope eh zang there are certain kinds of people, ale drinking people, people who did a little too much acid in the 60s, people who wear large warm jumpers and take long brisk walks in the countryside. These people maintain that fairies not only exist, but that they are very common. They also tend to believe that fairies are a countryside phenomenon, much like casual cruelty to animals, sexual intercourse with sheep, and having an impenetrable and parochial accent. This is, of course, rather wide of the mark. Fairies have always had a strong relationship with man, darning his socks, cobbling his shoes, cleaning his houses, drowning him, marrying him, and swapping his children for malformed hydrocephalics as a bit of a jape, and otherwise aiding or demeaning the efforts of man. Fairies do not need our belief to exist, they need us and the things that we leave around. Like an urban fox or the aerial rat known as the pigeon, if they survive they will have adapted to city life and found their niches, not in tending to flowers and trees, but in crashing computers, letting down the tyres on people's cars, and eating leftover pizza. Urban Fairy is a game of those kind of fairies, gone feral and urban, adapted to modern life. It's a comedy game of hijinks, weirdness and strangeness, and it almost runs itself. You want Urban Fairy Pocket Edition, which is revised and updated with better art and edited writing. And it's available from post-mort.com, drivethroughrpg, and lulu.com. Aerial Analysis, Prohibited.